Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today, Stress and Tension, Part 1, from the Mother. Aspiration and Will produce a stress in the being. But I say degree, for there is also the point upon which the stress works. I say to make yourself blank is to release the stress of your consciousness towards realization, towards the goal you want to realize. The stress is the pressure upon a point. What is concentrated upon a point and insists that it be done. The consciousness of the being, individual consciousness, puts a pressure upon a point, you see. We may take the example we were speaking of. You have a chronic illness, a malformation of the body, a physical defect. Then your consciousness, in its aspiration and will, puts a more or less constant stress on the thing it wants to realize, what you want to cure. Well, when you make yourself empty within, in meditation, this is one form of meditation, if you like, this means that you stop this concentration of will. Your consciousness becomes neutral for the moment. Its stress is upon this point. It may be other points on things more or less concrete or abstract, but the stress is on one point. And when you make yourself empty, you withdraw this pressure, this stress, and you remain like a blank page upon which nothing is written. This is what I call making yourself empty. Not to have any active will concentrated upon one point or another. And so I say, the moment you make yourself empty, the stress, in effect, stops. And yet, in your silent aspiration, you put yourself in contact with the forces attracted by this stress you usually have the special point of stress you have normally. That is why I have emphasized the fact that all depends upon the person, because everything depends upon his habitual aspiration, the thing he usually wants to realize, for he is naturally in touch with the forces which will answer his aspiration. So, if for a certain time one stops the activity of this aspiration and remains silently receptive, passive, well, the effect of the habitual aspiration remains and will draw just those forces which ought to answer it question. But is there any individuality in the forms of the vital world, if it is so fluid? Mother, individuality there is. Only its forms are not so fixed and hard as the forms of embodied beings. Individuality does not mean an unplastic rigidity. A stone has a very rigid form, 
perhaps the most rigid we know, but there is very little individuality in it. Take 10 or 20 stones together and you will have to be very careful if you want to discern between them. But the beings of the vital world can be recognized at the very first sight, one from another. You distinguish them by something in the way in which the form is built, by the atmosphere which it carries with it, by the manner in which each moves and speaks and acts. As human beings change their expression according as they are happy or angry, these beings also undergo change in the stress of their moods, but the alteration is more intense in the vital world. Not only the mere expression, but the very forms of the features change. The body is a very enduring servant. It bears the stress of circumstance tamely, like a beast of burden. I say to you, never be dejected and disappointed, but let your imagination be always hopeful and joyously plastic to the stress of the higher truth, so that the latter may find you full of the necessary formations to hold its creative light.